Hello, in this video we're going to look at a tax, dead weight loss, consumer and producer surplus, trying for an intuitive explanation. Suppose a buyer's maximum willingness to pay for a good is $10. A seller's marginal cost or minimum asking price for this good is $4. A trader transaction between the buyer and seller creates $6 of total surplus. 10 minus 4, the buyer's maximum willingness to pay, minus the seller's marginal cost. A trade will only occur if the price is between 4 and $10, and this will again give $6 of total surplus, regardless of the price in this range. The buyer will not pay more than $10, the seller will not accept less than $4. Let the price equal $8. The buyer pays the seller $8 for the good. Consumer surplus is going to be the difference between 10, the consumer's maximum willingness to pay, and the $8 price. This is going to be $2, 10 minus 8. Producer surplus is going to be the difference between the price that the seller gets and the seller's marginal cost. In this case, 8 minus 4 gives us $4. Total surplus, 2 plus 4 is $6. Let's try a different price, price of $5. Consumer pays the seller $5 for the good. Consumer surplus is a difference between the maximum willingness to pay, this $10, and the price. Producer surplus is a difference between the price the seller receives and the seller's marginal cost. Once again, the total surplus is $6. Now let's take into account taxes. If there is a tax on this transaction, that exceeds $6, the difference between the buyer's maximum willingness to pay and the seller's marginal cost, no trade will occur, leading to a deadweight loss of $6, which represents the loss in total surplus from the buyer and seller not trading. So once again, the buyer's maximum willingness to pay for a good is $10, the seller's marginal cost for this good, minimum asking price is $4, the 10 minus 4 here is where the $6 is coming from. Any tax that exceeds the $6, there will be no trade and thus the deadweight loss. So consider a $7 tax placed on the seller. Suppose the price is $9.80. Consumer surplus, $10 minus the price, gives a consumer surplus of 20 cents. Producer surplus, the $9.80, minus the tax, minus the marginal cost, means producer surplus is negative. So the producer would not sell this item here. In this case, there would be no trade. So the seller won't sell. The deadweight loss of the tax is $6, the 10 minus 4. Consider a $7 tax placed on this transaction where the buyer pays $3.50 of the tax and the seller pays $3.50 of the tax. Suppose the price is $7. So we've got a $7 tax and the price is $7. Consumer surplus, the maximum willingness to pay minus the price of $7 minus the tax that the buyer pays makes the consumer worse off. Here, consumer surplus is negative 50 cents, so the consumer would not be interested in this trade. As for the producer, the same thing. Producer receives the price of $7 minus the tax, minus the marginal cost. The, the, the producer would be worse off. This trade would not take place, and you would have a deadweight loss of $6. Consider a $7 tax placed on this transaction where the buyer pays $6.50 of the tax and the seller pays $0.50 cents of the tax. Let's get a price of $5. Consumer surplus is the maximum willingness to pay minus the price minus the tax that the consumer pays. So once again, the consumer would not be interested in this transaction. As for the producer, the producer gets the price of $5 minus the tax minus the marginal cost, the producer surplus is positive, but nevertheless, the consumer would not uh, in agree to this transaction. So the deadweight loss, again, is $6. So any tax that exceeds $6 in this case will lead to a deadweight loss, 
regardless of how the tax is split between the buyer and seller. So how the tax is split does not matter. The trade will not take place if the tax exceeds six dollars. All right, let's do a slightly different example. A buyer's maximum willingness to pay for a good is a hundred dollars. A seller's marginal cost for this good is eighty dollars. Let's bring in a sales tax. If the seller pays a twenty percent tax on the price of this transaction, what is the minimal minimum acceptable price to the seller? So we take the seller's marginal cost. We're going to increase it by 20%, which is just multiplying that $80 by 1.2. We get $96. A trade can still occur, but this time the trade can only occur between a price of $100 and $96. If the buyer pays a 20% tax on the price of this transaction, what is the maximal, maximum acceptable price to the buyer? So the buyer's maximum willingness to pay is going to equal the price times 1 plus the tax. So the buyer's maximum willingness to pay is $100. We're going to set price equal to P. And then 1 plus the tax gives us 1.2. Let's solve for P by dividing through by 1.2. So the price is $83.33. A trade still can occur between a price of $83.33 and the seller's marginal cost of $80. In this case where this entire tax is placed on the buyer. If the buyer pays $83.33, the total after-tax price is going to be $100, the buyer's maximum willingness to pay. All right, so with the same setup then, if a tax is placed in this market that exceeds 25% of the price, no trade will occur despite how the tax is split between the buyer and seller. Where does this 25% come from? It is a percent increase from $80 to $100. So just using a percentage change formula here, going from 80 to 100, that is a 25% increase. So any tax, sales tax that exceeds 25%, we're not gonna have a trade, there'll be a dead weight loss. Let the tax equal 30%, equally split between the buyer and seller. Suppose the price is $90. So the buyer's share of the tax is going to be 15% or 0.15. We multiply that by 90. The buyer would pay $13.50. As for the seller, the seller is going to pay half of this tax, 15%, so 0.15 times the price. The seller would be responsible for paying $13.50 of the tax. Overall, the government revenue here collected 30% of the $90 transaction is $27, or 13.5 plus 13.5. Consumer surplus in this case would be negative. Consumer's maximum willingness to pay is $100. Consumer pays the price of $90. Then the consumer pays the government $13.50 tax. Would leave the consumer worse off here, negative consumer surplus. Same thing for the producer. Producer receives $90 from the consumer. The producer's marginal cost is $80. Then the, cons then the producer pays the government the tax of $13.50, leaving the producer worse off. The trade will not take place. No trade occurs. To a slightly different example, we're going to place a 30% sales tax in this market. The buyer is going to pay 90% of this tax, and the seller pays 10% of this tax. Let the market price equal $90. Tax to the buyer is going to be as follows. 90% uh, of this 30% tax times the price. The buyer is going to pay $24.30 of this tax. The tax on the seller. Uh, the seller is going to pay 10.1% of this 30% tax times 90. The seller will pay $2.70. Overall, the government revenue here is $27, and we can see how that's split between the buyer and the seller. Consumer surplus, $100 minus the price, minus the tax that the consumer or buyer pays. Consumers were soft, the consumer would not trade. The producer, on the other hand, receives $90. Marginal cost of the producer is $80. This tax here of $2.70 is then subtracted. The producer would be better off, but the consumer will not carry out this transaction. A deadweight loss occurs here. 
uh, between the consumer's maximum willingness to pay of $100 and the producer's minimum asking price marginal cost, so it would have a deadweight loss of $20. Okay, that's it.